The Divorce Party, a single issue political party that advocates for a disunion of factions that vitiate each other's plans instead of working together to improve their country. The conspicuous incompatibility of the Republican and Democratic parties policies advance a need for the divorce party to advocate for a disunion or you know each state has autonomy and then they go to like an eu type thing which is united union <laughs> united states union or something i don't know split it up into three or four republics something like that I advocate for something like those that stuff's baby fuge a substance, medicine, or device used to drive away a babe. In my experience, an eight-day Star Trek binge accompanied by wearing a specific babyfuge called a fedora is the most successful treatment, especially when one is a sufferer of a spate of flirts from a superfluidity of babes. Which is way too common of a problem for me, especially. You know, it's a rough time, too many babes around. For the scientific method's sake, the expression for the scientific method's sake is a science academia aesthetic equivalent for the prosaic, commonplace, bland, religious expression for God's sake, meaning an oath of aspiration, annoyance, frustration, anger, or surprise. For the scientific method's sake is an interjection like for God's sake with the literal non-religious definition of expressing anger, surprise, assertion, etc. This is a satirical expression that generally makes fun of scientism, but occasionally is used to make fun of the superfluidity of religious expressions our society uses did for the scientific method's sake. Why haven't you considered these obvi obvi conspicuous confounding variables, dad? Of course it isn't the presence of churches that is increasing the crime rate, tis probably the higher population density that's causing the increased crime rates. The scientific method dude was talking to a dude opposing another religion, so like one religion opposing another religion, they're like, oh, all your churches is causing crime, dude, and they're like, no, it's not, man, it's the population density, man, there's still a lot of people in the area, that's why the crime rate's going up. Probably, I mean, that's the most germane cause. All right, can do spirit, a frame of mind where one believes it's possible for them to do anything. I love her can do spirit. She really did eat 18 curry bowls within 14 seconds. Damn, that's actually possible. Who made that a sentence? Oh, I did. Skip the Murdochian ideology. It it was it's really just pluralism. I think I'm just awfully confused. Used to be libertarian. I used to be socialist. Used to be. I mean, that's about it. <laughs> I'm one of those. I'm like a mix. I'm very unpopular. I'm a mix of uh, fringes. So, oof, nobody likes me. Um, sinocentrism. Sinocentrism is a dominant or exclusive focus on dogs in theory or practice, or to the efficacy of this. Anything can be considered sinocentric when it is concerned exclusively with doggies, or especially so with doggies, or a dog's point of view. Political philosophy, a dog-centered as opposed to human-centered value system. Three, an ethical viewpoint that extends inherent value to all doggy life, regardless of its sentience. Well, maybe not chihuahuas, but labradors, labradoodles, golden retrievers. <laughs> whoa, whoa, my bias a little of size. No, I'm, I'm being facetious. Don't worry. It's not the not see, not serious. Not all doggos. All doggos equal. Equal. The pugs are genetic anomalies. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna go. <laughs> Yelly, bro. Yelly. Etymology. Sino comes from the Greek word meaning dog. An individual's obsession with sinocentrism sometimes leads one to believe that a doggy's death in a film is much sadder than a human's death in a film. Well. Yes, most certainly. Dead cert, that's true. I am dead cert, that's true. Dead. All right, Winehead, a wine enthusiast. The Wineheads at Red Letter Media did not find Francis Ford Coppola's wine very good. Mike Scolasta, the Winehead, did not like Francis Ford Coppola's wine. Jay Bauman, the Winehead, did not like Francis Ford 
populist wine. Now, regardless of political beliefs, I don't know how I'm going to dislike a wine. The wine has to be especially bad for me to mislike it because it's just like grape juice, right? It's alcoholic grape juice. How can you mess that up? It's kind of hard to mess up, is it? Unless you put like hints of this, hints of that, then maybe you can mess up. If you like too much, if you overwhelm the senses, then yeah, like, oh, uh, pineapple, pumpkin, uh, you know, maybe, yeah. If you're just plain wine, though, it's like messing up a tomato pizza or like plain pizza. Like, it's kind of hard. I mean, I guess, oh, never mind. This is a bad digression. <laughs> Credential lettery. Worship of educational, academic, legal, or regulatory qualifications. Brasidas evinced his credential lettery via not listening to those without the proper qualifications and also by worshipping blindly listening to those with qualification without critical thought. Borderline non sequitur, a statement that only just succeeds in logically following the statement that came before it. A statement that logically follows the statement that came before it, but to an insignificant degree. Adi. Cha, it makes sense. Twas a borderline non sequitur, though. You were quite roundabout in the way you were trying to explain your point. I almost thought you were about to continue that abrupt transition to its endmost unrelatedness, where we would begin exploring a path of some non sequitur, but you just barely somehow embrought all those tangential thoughts together to explain your point. I'm impressed. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, you see. Pepe saliva. <laughs> Sylvia? What? <laughs> what? Adipo sympathy. The state or quality of being a fat simp. Either you could simp for the chonky. Many of us do like the chonky. Or it could be, I only have one definition listed, so I'm assuming the definition in this particular instance that I've listed is the state of being fat and a simp. But it could also be a simp of, you know, people who are a bit chonky. Sometimes you have, you know, you like the chonky look. Because chonky look can be quite pretty, you know? It's all preference, you know, we all have different preferences. Girls showed his conspicuous adipo sympathy, so like fat, like literal medical terminology for fat, or prefix, when he took off his top to display his abdominous, big-bellied physique, while as he danced with his bell delphine body pillow. Oh, yes, glorious. Haptopronic, the inclination to respond favorably to amorous advances. Colloquy. The state of being hot to throat, i.e. somebody who's down the fuck. That dude is totally haptopronic. You know, this is kind of a hard word. A lot of the words I'm making up are very hard to pronounce. And that very fact makes it not a very good word. But, you know, it's interesting, you know, fun to combine them, mishmash, see which one stick. That one's probably not going to stick. He's so flirty. Haptopronic. Eh, it sounds too formal and whatnot. I don't know. Robo. See, it can be formal, but it needs a funny tone. It needs some levity to it. This is like formal and kind of off-putting, maybe. I don't know. Or like people have unjust reactions to it. Kind of harsh. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Robo morphism. Attribution of robotic qualities to humans. The process of humans becoming robotic or robot-like. Yada. Yes, robomorphism is a kind of dirty talk for us. We know binary. It's a kind of dirty talk for us robosexuals. Press it us. 0-1-1-0-0-0-1-1-0-0-1-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-0-1-
twas not chock full of Trumptarian mojo until Mr. Free Market's presidency, the president who switched the USA to a parliamentary. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Bowiehood, an association, society, or community of people linked by a common interest in David Bowie. To prove she was a part of the Bowiehood, Hood, she recited all the lyrics from David Bowie's Young Americans album. Margarita Mancy, predicting the future by drinking margaritas. Predicting the future by drinking an excessive amount of margaritas. And Ness's Margarita Mancy is really impressive. She really thinks she's predicting the future when, in actuality, she's just relaying to us what just happened via governed, given speech. Sympathy, the state or quality of being a simp. His sympathy clouded its judgment on whether or not to trust her. The total smoke shows claim that she was not guilty of the crime of stealing curry bread from the bakery. Compassionate quasi-libertarian, oh my gosh. Fuck, I was so biased. Uh, whatever. A dilettante, who was interested in libertarianism, but would more often than not break with the philosophy, politics, and economics of libertarianism for supposed compassionate reasoning that comes from an opposing camp. They are believer in the political doctrine that is libertarianism, which emphasizes individual liberty and a lack of government regulation, intervention, and oversight, both in manners of economy and in personal behavior, where no one's rights are being violated or threatened. Yet they are quick to cede their beliefs to appease opposing camps or to maintain supposed good optics. This compassionate quasi-libertarian is oft associated with Jiroetism, the practice of frequently altering one's views and opinions to follow current trends, bandwagonism, the tendency to jump on a bandwagon, i.e. to join a craze or trend, sometimes for profit, or with someone who is dangerously soft-hearted or frighted to argue into the weeds about the trade-offs consequentialism, rule authoritarian, what, what, rule, okay, rule of utilitarianism, etc. I mean, I had a decent, sometimes it's just, what am I going on, like, borderline non-sequitur stuff here, whatever. The compassionate quasi-libertarian was scared to mention the third variable effect, where this Z was not mentioned in the study the debaters were discussing, was more likely to influence A rather than B that was mentioned in the study. But the compassionate quasi-libertarian was scared that he would be accused of not wanting to help A, albeit in his heart he believes that intervening with B wouldn't help A, and if only he got around to intervening with Z instead of B, then everything would be swell. So this is me avoiding trying to bring up a particular issue, so we're going to remain neutral, but I think it's getting kind of complicated with adding Zs and other other standards, like freaking algebra, okay? Whatever. It's not, it's not bad, but... It's a bit grammarless, too. I don't have proper punctuation, do I? Whatever, punctuation. Opinion stenosis, an abnormal narrowing of acceptable opinions or thoughts. The process of truncating the scope of acceptable opinions in a society. Meave was brazzed off by the bigwig's attempt to categorize her formerly nigh-ubiquitous opinion that David Bowie is our lord and savior as fringe. Such irksome opinion stenosis, she thought. Nasophile, a person who collects or has a great love of knowledge. Yes, Elvira, the Nasophile, was also a big-time trivia nerd. I mean, of course she was. Being a trivia nerd sort of goes with the territory of being a Nasophile. Waifu Latree, excessive admiration for a wife. Oh my god! The weeb was jubilant from his waifu Latree of Taiga Asaka. <laughs> With his newly bought Taiga Asuka body pillow. Why is it always body pillows with me? I don't even have a body pillow. Biomictarian, an advocate of the political ideology whose blueprint for governing is the imitation of the models, systems, and elements of nature for the purpose of solving complex human problems. I wonder which bias I was when I wrote this. We'll find out. And it looks like libertarian bias. Fuck. Or whatever. The biomimitarian mentioned that if you want to take in immigrants, while you have a welfare state, you should take Mithridatism into account to preclude the welfare state from becoming overwhelmed. Yet, if you fight shy of a welfare state, you might be able to take advantage of an open borders policy and ergo explode your GP. <laughs> GDP, okay. So that's like a, that's not even strictly a libertarian bias there. That's more like a Friedman in bias or whatever. That's like a Milton Friedman thing, whatever. I don't even think that was me speaking. I think that was just top of mind. I had for the definite, I don't even think that was my bias at the time. I'm very pro-immigration. 
regardless. If this thing is a good thing, regardless of the policy. A pride born, communicated. I mean, I was like that on both sides when I was socialist and when I was libertarian. I was very pro immigration, regardless. Maybe an orphan belief of which one. I was socialist first, so I assume it's an orphan belief of that, or I don't know. It's justified in both ideologies. So pride born. Actually, it's there are socialisms who kind of take on this whole mercantilist approach instead of the decentralist whatever. A pride born, communicated or propagated by pride, conveyed by traveling on or involving travel or transportation via pride. Despite being shown a nigh irrefutable evidence to the contrary, his pride born need to be loftier than his totally lame mum and her nigh irrefutable evidence presented, he decided to gainsay her evidence and continue to repeat his now vitiated previous position on their debate over whether dubs were better than subs. Subs are better. Trekkie Fuge, a substance, medicine, or device used to drive away fans of the Star Trek franchise, J.J. Abrams, <laughs> or of specific television series or films within that franchise, or of a specific, I forgot, a. Many consider J.J. Abrams and his reboots as a tricky fuge for newcomers to the Trek fandom. Yeah, probably, most likely. Schrodinger's Volcano, a new take on the famous thought experiment Schrodinger's Cat that illustrates a paradox of quantum superposition and brought by the undisputed masterpiece Too Much Volcano and its confusion and brought by Natsuki's lyrics describing the Asokuji National Park volcano situation. Natsuki mentioned that there is too much volcano and that there is no volcano. Many theorize that the answer is that it is too much volcano, given that the song is titled Too Much Volcano, albeit that could just be Chris naming the song whatever, you know, was part of the lyrics, you know, whatever's top of mind, yeah, yeah. Neglected gas stoves left on with candles of booting the like Schrodinger's volcano until you check in. They exist as both exploded and non-exploded. Suggestionize to influence by the power of suggestion. When David Tennant's 10th Doctor would suggestionize someone, the result was often notably substantial, likely due to his excessive charm. Let's turn my light into night, hold the hands in the rain, yeah, he feeling my pain. Fresh f it up, I think I'm going insane. I ain't trying to hear it. I can feel it, I can feel it in my spirit. Staring at the sun, feeling more abundant. Look into my eyes to show you where I'm coming from. Attach my pain into your life, will leave you just the